Well, according to a recent report here at Fox, Republican Party leaders have a secret plan to win the 2018 midterms. Instead of telling voters what they would do with another two years in office, they've decided to run once again against Hillary Clinton, the former Democratic nominee. It worked last time. The idea is it'll work again. The appeal is obvious. Nobody really likes Hillary Clinton, even people who are paid to pretend they like her. The downside is it's not really a relevant argument. Hillary Clinton doesn't run anything anymore. She doesn't represent the modern Democratic Party. They've moved on to another planet. And that's the point. <laughs> Democratic leaders are now saying things far more extreme than anything a Midwestern Methodist like Hillary Clinton ever would have said or thought. They become openly bigoted, for example, blaming an entire ethnic group for the country's problems. They've called for eliminating our country's borders, the right to self-defense, even the distinction between male and female. They're at war with nature and with common sense. And by the way, they're agitating for an actual war against Russia. They are insane. Some of them are dangerous. And somebody ought to run against them, not against the ghost of some elderly retired nominee from last cycle. Yet somehow, the Republicans in Congress say they're not going to do that. Are they? We have someone to tell us. Congressman Jim Jordan is a Republican who represents the proud state of Ohio, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thank you for you coming You bet. On. Good to be with you. So, look, I don't want to poo-poo the idea of running against Hillary. I love doing Hillary segments. Yeah. They're hilarious. They're a little mean, yeah. but it's fun. But the Democratic Party of right now is not the party of Hillary Clinton. Right. It's an openly extremist, right. racist party, I would argue. And... I think it's obvious that Republicans in opposition be, should run against them, but why aren't they? Well, I think what I would say is let's let's run for what we told them we were going to do in 16. Let's let's run on what we've accomplished. And I would argue 17 was a good year. Uh, regulations were down. The taxes have been lowered. The economy was growing. ISIS is backpedaling. The embassy's gone to Jerusalem. Gorsuch is on the court. That was a pretty darn good year. Really? That's but, people voted to move the embassy to Jerusalem? Well, all I'm taxes? saying is there, there, there are lots of Republicans who think that being... being uh, being our best friend and ally in the Middle East, Israel, doing something like that makes sense. After all, every other capital in the world, that's where you're in. Hey, look, I'm not, but all I'm, I'm, saying not against, is, I'm not against it. I mean, all I'm, I'm saying care, is 17 just... was a pretty good year. So far this year, we haven't been doing what we said. This spending bill we passed four weeks ago was not what we're supposed to be doing. So let's do what never hurts to keep your promises. Never hurts to do what you told them you were going to do and go run on that and run against what the left, the hard left is pushing in their party. I think that's the winning message. So if you had a political party that literally wanted to eliminate the differences between men and women and pretend that nature wasn't real. Yeah, run against that. I'm all for it. I haven't ever heard a Republican say, actually, men and women are different. That's a biological fact. And when you pretend marriage otherwise, you destroy mar society. Marriage should be what marriage has no, always been. Even, Life should be protected. Not even I mean, marriage. All like, they're, the Democrats have gotten to the point where they are attacking people, trying to get them fired from their jobs for acknowledging there are biological differences yep. between the sexes. Why do Republicans they're going, not and they're, and they're going on colleges camp, college campuses, not letting people, conservatives, Christians, they're anti-Semitic stuff on college. They're stopping all those kind of things. Um, the, stop, go, attacking the first time. I think we should camp. We had Ben Shapiro, Adam Carolla come in in a committee that I get the privilege of chairing talking about what's going on on college campuses, how radical it is, how anti-Semitic it is, how anti-Christian it is, how anti-conservative it is, and how anti-basic basic fundamental beliefs it is. So I'm all for that as well. But let's, let's go do what we told them we were going to do, what they elected us to do in November of 2016, and let's, let's show that contrast with what the radical left is So I, mean, I agree. Really, the 2016 election, if you could isolate one promise, obviously be the wall. Of course. And we need to do that. And that's been the one consistently ignored by Republicans in Congress. Like, yeah. we just had this massive spending bill, no wall. We funded things in that bill we said we wouldn't. We didn't fund things we said, namely the wall. It was a $1.3 trillion bill that we had 15 hours to look at, 2,232 pages. And guess how long the debate was? One hour. One hour of debate. We go home for Easter recess after that. We come back. We have four hours to debate a three-page bill, balanced budget amendment, which is a great idea, but something everyone knows is not going to get through the Congress and become law. We debate that for four hours. That's what drives American voters crazy. They're like, really? No wonder they're cynical about Capitol Hill, cynical about Congress, cynical about what they see at this place. So that's the kind of stuff that has to change because, again, it's not consistent with what we... Let's let's actually fund the things we said we would, like the wall, and not fund things like like Planned Parenthood. Give them give them your tax dollars. That's ridiculous. We should stop that. Why would I don't want you to beat up on the speaker on his way out? But why? I'm how not, do we wind up with a spending bill that funded Planned Parenthood for half a billion dollars? I don't know. You know what happened? We took three amendments. This is how bad it's gotten. We took three amendments to the Rules Committee the night before that vote. One of them was to deal with the Planned Parenthood issue, and all three amendments were not made in order. And you know why they weren't made in order? 
because they would have passed. They would have passed on the House so floor. So whose response? Who did that? That's, that comes from the leadership telling the Rules Committee you can't make these things in order because actually they would pass on the floor. So Paul but Ryan is more for Planned Parenthood than for no, the No, no. All I'm saying is he's more for getting something through that the swamp likes, mainly the United States Senate, because the argument is, oh, if you make those amendments in order, they will pass. The bill will go to the Senate and they won't pass it. Well, I'm tired of that. Let's have the debate. And we, we were so poised to win, Tucker. Chuck Schumer shut down the government o uh, over a weekend over amnesty and the American people said, we don't think that's a smart idea. We were poised to win instead. We did what the swamp always does. We spent more money on everything. And gave Google a tax cut. Perfect. Congressman, thank you, you for bet. that. Thank I you. appreciate it. Fox senior political analyst Britt Hume joins us now. Britt, do you think, and again, I, I feel like a hypocrite scolding anybody for making fun of Hillary Clinton since I've done it so much and enjoyed it so deeply, but is that a winning strategy for a midterm <laughs> campaign? No, I wouldn't think so. It seems to me that uh, she's, she's really not around. I mean, she look. She's, a, she's somebody you can poke fun at in a campaign speech because she's had such a terrible time getting over her defeat and continues, continues to cite all kinds of uh, things and people to blame that are plainly not the main cause of her downfall. Um, but making her the object or the, or the principal subject of your campaign doesn't make any sense at all. You either have, you have to run on your record or you have to run against something that the current Democratic Party, as you pointed out, is promoting. And there's all sorts of things that the current Democratic Party is promoting that Republicans could run against. And I assume that in the fullness of time, they'll come to their senses and begin to do that. Just talk about running against Hillary seems to me to make little sense. There does seem to be this kind of, the posture of the Democrats and Republicans has always struck me as very different. Democrats seem to feel really believe that they're right and that they're on God's side. Oh, they don't believe in God, but they're on whatever. They're on the right side. And Republicans feel sort of half embarrassed about their ideas. Am I imagining that, or have you perceived it? No, I, no. I don't, well, I wouldn't put it quite that way, but I think you're onto something, Tucker. That Democrats fervently believe not only that they're on the right and moral side of the issue, but that it is the only side that a thinking person could be on, right. and it is That's therefore right. unthinkable that anyone would resist them on the things that they're trying to do because they're on the, they're, they're they're for the good things. They're they're for the cause of good. And therefore, there must be something corrupt and wrong and yes. immoral about those who oppose them. They really don't see and appreciate uh, both sides of the issue and of any issue, really, in, in the current atmosphere, which accounts to some extent for the poison. Now, look, there's plenty of cynicism about Democrats on the Republican side, people who believe that, you know, that, that, that all the Democratic schemes to, to provide aid and comfort to the, the lame, the halt, the blind, the poor, and the underprivileged are all really campaign uh, um, uh, schemes to try to get reelected and to try to, to basically pay off groups of constituents. I don't believe that. I think that may have that effect in some instances. But Democrats are genuinely feel compassion for these people, and they think that their remedies are the right remedies. Uh, so we end up of an argument when neither side trusts the other. That's where we are. Interesting. What, what do you think? The, I mean, as of today, and things. This is a dynamic moment, obviously. Um, but what do you think the chances are of a Democratic takeover of the House? And who would be the speaker? It won't be Pelosi again, I don't think, if they win. Who would it be? I don't know who it would be. Uh, uh, I, don't, I think you're right that the Democrats are prepared to move on to a new generation of leaders. I'm just not sure who it would be. Um, but I would say, say this about the, about the fall election. It's still reasonably early. Uh, if the election were held today, I think there'd be a big blue wave. Um, but it won't be. And we don't know who all the candidates are going to be. And the math is very much uh, in the Senate side is helpful to the Republicans. In the, in the House side, of course, it never changes. It's all right. seats up. And there's always political gravity against the party that has the White House in a president's first midterm election. Yeah. And that is where we are. And you take that and combine it with the fact that the president is, is, is uh, approval numbers are upside down, as they have long been. And you have what appears to be a formula for a big win by the by the out party, the Democrats. Um, but that might not happen. It did not. It did not happen in George W. Bush's first midterm, largely because uh, of the post 9/11 atmosphere in which his leadership was generally well uh, well received, and it helped him and his party. I don't know that we have a cause here that would replicate that. So I mean, right. I think it's uphill for the Republicans all the way, no doubt about it. And and they would be well advised, as you suggest, Tucker, to find something to run on and or run against more more yes. more powerful than running against the the uh, now uh, out of office, out of light, out of luck, uh, beaten candidate Hillary Clinton. 
Yeah. If the election were held today, people would be very confused because it's April. But I, I agree with you <laughs> completely. Britt, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Tucker. Well, the Democratic Party's agenda already includes curtailing gun rights, opening the borders. Could reparations join that list? Apparently, it's about to, and we'll discuss it. Plus, we'll take you back to the live to the state dinner where the Trumps are hosting the French president and his wife. Live coverage of the president's toast in just a moment.